Amen. Hello. We all right? Yes. Good. Hello. My name's Tony. I'm from a small town in the northeast of England called Hartlepool. <laughs> Correct. Well done. Well played, everyone. <laughs> Fucking horrible, right? I was there earlier today, genuinely overheard someone at the train station turn to their friend and go, Greg's for lunch. Do I look fucking posh? (laughs) Welcome to my hometown, right? I'm not posh. (laughs) That's a room full of people going, we know. Uh, I know I'm not posh. I've moved house on the bus twice. (laughs) Did you know you had to pay for a lamp? (laughs) Neither did I, right? I I know I'm not posh because there's a woman in my hometown we call Posh Linda because she went to a Toby Carvery once. <laughs> I, I used to ask people on stage if there was anyone posh in. I've stopped doing that since the last time I was in Liverpool. And I was like, is there anyone in here, in here who'd count themselves as being posh? And a voice at the back went, Fucking me! <laughs> no... <laughs> Right, I'll be honest with you, you seem like nice people. I didn't believe him, right? (laughs) Right, I'll dig a little deeper. I'll ask another question. What's the poshest thing that you own? And he went, a fucking boat. (laughs) I was stumped. (laughs) I had nothing to say until his girlfriend went, a boat. It's a rubber dinghy, you prick. (laughs) And I mean, thanks for laughing, because that's the worst excuse at your accent you've ever heard. Uh, I, I tried to be posh. I went down to London, because that's where they keep it all now. I went down with... I went in this bar with my friend Mike. The only thing you need to know about Mike is Mike once accidentally split up with a woman. Using one sentence, he just looked at her and went, I wish you were more flexible, like my sister. thing is, right, she's not the witty one in our group. She looked him dead in the eye and went, I wish you had a bigger cock like your brother, and walked out, right? <laughs> we went in this bar in London. They charged me £12 for a beer. We were in this bar for two and a half hours. We shared that beer, right? <laughs> I've still got the glass, fuck them. Uh, <laughs> while I was in there, a woman walked past me and just went, oh, I love the Northern accent. <laughs> Not. Now, I'm trying to think of a nice way of describing this woman. She's the kind of woman who dies in a horror film and you just think, good. <laughs> this is nice. Because it wasn't even that that upset me. The thing that upset me was when she went, oh, I don't know how you poor northerners can afford to have fun. Because like, if you need money to have fun, just because my daddy doesn't own land doesn't mean I can't have fun. Just because if I called him daddy, he'd fucking hit me. <laughs> If I knew who he was. <laughs> and just because I've never had pheasant eggs for tea, and yeah, for this joke, I had to Google and find out whether or not pheasants laid eggs. That's <laughs> not the point. They're not the fun things in life. The fun things in life are drinking wine from a box. Don't cost a lot of money, but if you're drinking wine from a box, you're having a good Monday morning. Doesn't matter what your boss tells you. Most fun you can ever have is still putting things in people's shopping trolleys when they're not looking. (laughs) I like you people, we're going to get on, right? (laughs) For those who haven't played, start easy. Condoms and an old person's, it's good for a giggle, right? (laughs) Move it up a level, steak and a vegan's, they'll get a new fucking trolley. (laughs) Shampoo and a bald man's, always good for a laugh. Right, there's a friendly version and a horrible version of this joke. Give me a cheer if you want the friendly one. (laughs) I feel like you're outnumbered. Uh, Give me a cheer if you want the horrible one. I love you people. Uh, This is my favourite, right? This is the one you've got to try. Find two trolleys next to each other when nobody else is around. Take the baby out of one, put it in the one next to it, disappear. (laughs) so I do this for a job now Uh, 
mainly because I've been sacked from every other job I've had for telling jokes like that. Uh, things, like, I used to work in call centres where I was like cold calling people and there was one where I rang a guy and I was like, hello, sir. I'm calling about your gas and electric. And he went, I'm not interested. And I'm like, cool, I'll turn it off. <laughs> and they sacked me for that. Didn't feel fair. Uh, I was working for one company. I rang a guy up and I went, hello, sir. Before I got any further, he went, you need to get yourself a proper fucking job. I said, sir, I'm calling you at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. <laughs> on your landline. <laughs> Which of us really needs a proper fucking job here? <laughs> Sacked. <laughs> I, was working, oh, right, I was working in customer services for a company called, let's call them O2. It was their name. <laughs> Someone rang me up. I was like, you threw it at customer services. She went, you've ruined my daughter's birthday. I'm very sorry to hear that. How old was your daughter? She said, 15. I said, do you want me to ruin her next birthday? <laughs> I'll take the blame on that one. That was pretty much my fault. <laughs> Thing is, right, because of that, I now feel like I'm well within my rights to mess with anyone from a call centre that rings me. Guy rang me up the other day and went, Hello, sir, have you been missold PPI? And I went, Yes. <laughs> oh, you'd be shocked how much that throws them. They're not fucking expecting it. <laughs> and before we go into that, I'm just currently running a survey of people who are phoning in this area. I wondered if I could take 10 minutes of your time to answer a couple of my questions. <laughs> Question number one, PPI man Who supplies your gas and electric? <laughs> very special deal on at the moment where I'll fix and freeze your rates for the next 24 months and install a new meter. How does that sound? And he went, have you been missold PPI? <laughs> I went, yes, but once we've looked at that, we can also install a solar panel on your roof to further reduce your costs. <laughs> and he went, I am going to have to ask again, have you been missold PPI? I went, yes, once we've looked at that, I have a deal on double glazing once we've looked at that. <laughs> We can also have a look at your home insurance, your life insurance, your pet insurance, your gambling insurance, your insurance for your insurance of your pet insurance and your home insurance and your mobile phone insurance. And my friend, have you been sick on an all-inclusive holiday in the last six years? And he put me on hold, right? Um... It was about 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. I didn't have a lot to do. <laughs> I sat there, I waited, a voice came on the phone. It wasn't my new friend. It was his manager who went, Hello, sir. You've been speaking with my colleague, Ben. I don't know what's happened. He seems very distressed. <laughs> I went, ah, it seems like he's had an accident at work. I can probably help him with that. <laughs> I've been Tony Basnett. Good night.